I'll try to make a harness for this key that I am familiar. Uh, I noticed I was reading the manual, which I normally don't do, but I've never done this before, so I thought I'd give it a shot. And it explains everything here, which is good. But right here on page three. Here it says the key amplifier is capable of using the wiring directly from your head unit, but for best results, it's recommended using power and ground wiring from the battery. Uh, so I am going to use a harness uh, just as a temporary install uh, to make sure I like the kicker amp. I'm going to test it, make sure I don't have any problems, and then later on. I may replace my subwoofer as well, and then I will rewire everything as a whole. But for now, I'm going to try to attempt to wire it up real quick and see if it works. Alright, so I'm going to hook it up to an Android head unit like this and Jeep Wrangler. I'm going to try to make it. I'm going to buy a bunch of stuff from Amazon. Conductor speaker wires, like nine wire, speed wire, whatever you want to call it. try to do here. So I have the male male and female metro harness, right? So something like this is what's coming out of my Jeep currently to hook up to my speaker wires. Uh, and normally you would just plug this guy into the Jeep. This should be relevant for any vehicle, but I'm using a Jeep for example because that's what I have. Uh, so Normally, this is coming out of the Jeep, and you just plug this into it, and it works. That's where all your, for just regular speaker wire, and power, and all that stuff. Maybe it works a little too good. So, uh, what I'm going to do, I don't have two of these, for example, but, so this is still going to be in the Jeep, but, I. Uh, I'm going to use this one. This is the wiring from the from the kicker key amplifier. I'm only going to use this to power for 77 kick 10 uh, Mopar and kicker speakers. Coax. So basically, I'm going to take this guy wire it into this guy I'll connect this here these wires I'll splice into so this one plugs into the amplifier This side. That's these RCAs. Also got these guys. Kicker KXL. And KYFM. 
this up. Uh, this speaker, this one does have some RCA inputs that I might try. Uh, but for simplicity of harnessing, I may just try this. So I got these where it splits an RCA into speaker level wires. So essentially, I'll just plug these into here. So I'll put this guy up here. feeds up here, right? So this is the input. So this would be wired to the speaker side of this guy. Male side. So just the purples. Purple, white, white, gray, gray, green, green. Right? So just these. Essentially, we go here. And the rest of these wires would need to go to. So these are your outputs as well, right? So your so on this side, you have your power and ground, and your remote turn on lead. The rest of these are just speaker wires. So this would go to the speaker wire portion of this. Some of these I don't need. I'll tell you that right now. So this comes a tourist package up, but there's a little guide here. It tells you what color goes to what. So fronts and violets and rears, dimmer. There's an orange amp ground, blue white amp turn on is blue power antenna is black. This is the fuse that comes in, so I have to cut that and put it onto here. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do all this. Alright, so this got real confusing. I had to take it offline and do it or off video. So here's my regular speaker wires. I got them all set up. And I noticed if I looked at my head unit. I had two extra wires right here that weren't in the Metro harness. I think that's for accessory or something. So I went ahead and added these in here. I made a separate video about how you get these little pins out. You basically take this tool and you pry it up under here to get them out. And that one's been kind of beat to death. but. So, let's see if I can get one out real quick.
That little plastic nub is. You want to go under there. You should feel a little bit of a click, and then if you push it in and pull this out. You want some tension on this. It's kind of hard to do this and make a video at the same time. Once it gets in there, it should come right out. Not like that, apparently. There we go. So that's probably more force than you want to use, but so you can see where this went under there, right? That's a real pain. So you might want to get two metro harnesses so you can move the wires over like this. And then on the old uh, male side. You know, I need those matching wires, so basically I need all these speaker wires, of course. But all these wires are extra, right? So I don't need these I have here to get them out. This side's much easier. You just pop this guy up with a screwdriver, and then these to just pull right out. Just not to get both ends up. There we go. Now he pulls right out. Basically, you have your power and ground, your eight speaker wires, and whatever these two are. I'm just going to match these to here, and it should be good. So essentially, what I have right now I've got this little kit from Amazon too, it's full of these little connectors. Just using butt connectors real quick. Try to set all this up. Let's get everything out of the way here so we can see. One end, this will connect to my radio. I have speed wire and I hooked up all the speaker wires and the blue. I believe the amp turn on, which I don't need. But I figured I'd hook it up just for how it should be. This end I also hooked up the wires, the, all the wires going into the harness for the kicker amp. The power side is placed into this, so I'm just going to tap it into this uh, to test it. I'll run this to the battery when I do a full install, but for now I'm just going to wire it in to. I got this little thing from QuadraTech just to test the wires one time, just to. It should plug into your AC or behind the AC. It has these little screw down guys. So I can basically, I'm going to run the power into here and the ground into here. On this side. And I'm just going to power it up to see if it works. And also, what I'm going to do. I'm gonna wire these together. I'm gonna pull these speaker wires. I'm gonna try it with RCA. If it works with RCA, I'm just gonna pull all these speaker wires out. Because I don't need that going back into the Jeep. Or into the, sorry. This side goes into the. This side goes to the Jeep. This side goes into the radio. 
So if I'm using my RCAs, I don't need all these speaker wires, but I will need whatever these guys do. So I'm going to splice these two together. This will plug in behind the dash, and then I'll run all this long wire under the seat eventually right now. I'm just going to put in the glove box and test it. Uh, so yeah, this gets confusing. Picked up one of these guys at Home Depot. Should perfectly strip your wire instead of the way I was doing it last night. Basically, I'm going to use yellow. Cut this guy off. It's one of these simple guys. Before I get a permanent connection, I'm going to solder all this together. For now, I'm just going to use these. Alright, so the top one. So blue goes to white black. There's the part from Quadratech. You can see the reds, positive, brown, negative. Alright, I got this kit from Amazon. I had a pry tool I've been using for years and I lost it. So I figured that was just something that came with a pro clip. So. I replaced my Jeep stuff. I figured it'd be good to get a full kit here. So you can see, this is the 11 piece trim removal tool set. It's pretty cheap. It's like quality stuff. Flexible, still soft enough, it shouldn't damage the dash. So, it says approved for automotive. I don't know if that's correct or not. Got this cool little pouch that Velcro shut. Folds over. 
and it also has another Velcro closure. Let's see. I guess you could fold those up even more than that if you wanted to. You could roll it to like a little ball, maybe. No. crazy mess of wires here now so this is going to be pretty confusing this is my quadratech guy you can see that behind the cigarette lighter is where we're going not a ton of room here but you can see if you squeeze down this guy pops out so the white guy here should go on this gray guy right and it does fairly simply. Okay. Now the gray guy should go back into the blue. This gray tip will go back into the blue side like the previous one was to complete the circuit. Alright, so you can see that clips in there. And the goal is to snake this. Probably should have done that first. I'm going to snake this through there. Kind of see that white guy poking out there. Okay, so I got that plugged in and pulled out through here. So there you can see I ran it through here. So now you got yourself a power supply. And this closes up just fine. Ignore all these other wires. But these go through just fine. Alright, so it's pretty safe to say it's hard to tell what's going on here now because it's such chaos. But, I'm trying to use this guy for power. And I'm going to use these RCAs from Amazon. Plugged into this side, plugged into my headset using this harness. So, we'll give this a shot. So, I'm using my crazy harness, and clearly, I'm getting power. Because you're coming on, as you can see, there's a bunch of stray wires there. I'll fix that before I'm done. So, let's just try to play some music. In theory, all four of my speakers should work. In actuality, none of my speakers work. around so you can figure out what's going on all right I tried to take a bunch of shortcuts and it didn't work so I tried using this guy from Quadratech didn't work so now I'm gonna go ahead and ground it here Bought some wire from Home Depot. I'm gonna run the wire to the battery as well. So I pretty much immediately slashed my finger open this guy. So pretty sure I got tetanus. I'm gonna die. But I'm gonna finish this thing first. So yeah, watch out for that guy. It's sharp. Alright, Home Depot was out black wire, so I got white wire, but same concept, right? I made this long because I'm just making sure it works. And then I'm gonna tighten everything up. Going to there, which is a 10 millimeter. For my power, I'm gonna go through here. This little guy, I saw someone on YouTube use it. He used a barbecue skewer. I didn't have any of those, so I'm gonna try chopsticks. All right, so I taped two chopsticks together, or a chopstick and a skewer see where it comes out there and there 
out the other one. So I'm going to eventually tape this wire to it. I got my little hood lock. So now apparently you're supposed to just. So my current kicker amp is just wired up to this guy. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to slap it on top of there. But we're supposed to remove the negative battery cable first. So I'm going to do that and hopefully not electrocute myself. Because I should clarify, I really don't have a whole lot of idea what I'm doing here. Never did anything like this before. So uh, we're just going to give it a shot. Alright, so I disconnected the negative, and then I put paper bag to hold it so it wouldn't slip and retouch it. If that slips and retouches it, then you're reconnecting the circuit. And again, I should reiterate, I have no idea what I'm doing here. So, I also dropped that little metal clip down in there and I had to fish it out with chopsticks. So again, no idea what I'm doing. More uh, proof I don't know what I'm doing. I've taped together a skewer to a chopstick to the wire. My goal was to drag that through that little hole right there. So you see, we're in there. Right here. So I gotta slowly pull on this and boom, there goes my wire. This wire, where my fuse guy goes, one end's gonna have this little clamp, and the other end will go to the other end of that wire. Alright, use my lighter, heat shrink it on there, now I'm gonna wrap it up with the red tape. Alright, now we're all red taped up. Fuse guy. I'm gonna take the fuse out while I'm working on this. Now we're gonna. I'm going to cut that and re-splice it into the other guy. Alright, so, uh, butt spliced, heat shrink. I'm going to tape it up and tie it down to that guy. Alright, so i got my ground connected. Got this spliced in. So the dual red wire going to the red wire that I have going through here. Uh, this here says disconnect the vehicle's battery, then connect the ground wire to the amplifier. That's what I did. And then, then do the red wire. Alright. So, hopefully, I don't electrocute myself. This is my kicker BSS amp wire. I'm going to unscrew that. I just removed the amp uh, fuse. So I'm going to unscrew that and then put the other one on top of it. And then tie it back down. Took that one off. That was a 13 millimeter. Probably shouldn't put that metal weight on your fender, but it'll be alright. I'm going to wrap some tape around here first. Alright, so I got that tied down. I got this 3M fabric tape. I'm going to wrap it all around all this stuff. And so now I'm going to close this guy. Go over here to make sure that went down. Let's see. This is the other one. Uh, zip tie this guy up to the same places as the other one. And then I'm going to reconnect the cable. Alright, so I got those zip tied down. I'm going to try to put the battery cable back on. Hopefully I don't explode. I got this placed in here and grounded. So I think I'm okay. And I got the fuses pulled. 
All right, like a scared little girl, I reconnected this. It, uh, this little clip guy holds it together to make sure it doesn't pop off. Uh, I guess I'm gonna put my pieces back in. I hope nothing explodes. I'll put my fuses back in. Let's see. It's back in there now. It's not a lot of instructions telling you if you should or shouldn't do that, but I did it. So I'll take this all up. I also bought this at Home Depot Flex Tubing. I'm going to try to put that out here. Just make it see if it helps. So I just kind of eyeballed it and tied it off. I should have done this before and I tied all this down, but here we are. Put this thing on really sucks. So I got a lot of slack here. I'm going to try to pull it. Hopefully some black tape comes through, but it may not. And I'll seal that up better when I do this permanently. Alright, so. I can actually pull a little bit more in. I'm going to put some more of this on so it's easier to slide. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and start it. Make sure nothing will explode. I'm to shut this to make sure it doesn't pinch this. So I stopped for a dinner and beer break. I'm a good lock. So far, nothing's been on fire. There's already a little hole here, so I ran that through there and slip that on there. Tie this up some more, but I figured I should make sure the thing works before I start strapping all this down too much. I guess. So, I'm pretty sure I had this working right before, but I didn't hook up the remote turn on lead right there. So, that's stupid. Had I done that, probably would have been working. Let's just see if it works. I got lights now. I didn't have lights before. So that means it, I'm assuming it's going to work. Yeah. I got an audio now. Clean this rat's nest up. This is pretty ugly, huh? Alright, and then I gotta figure out how to adjust these switches. It's on 12 volts here. That's why I need the remote turn on, because I'm using the RCAs instead. Alright. Still got a lot of work to do. This day is getting away from me. It's now 7-Eleven. Cut my arm up. I've got my fingers up. It's a lot of work for a temporary install. Now I know that works. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Just put one more tie up here, really. i just cut these clips off. Maybe tie that a little bit over here. But yeah. 
It's not bad. Alright, so I uh, put one here, 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 and here. Should be good. I don't think I have any pinches. Takes you wonder how the hood bolt bolt hood lock works. It just rivets on there like that. I got a video about it. It's pretty cool. Alright, so you can see when I'm closing. Nothing should be hitting or pinching there. Alright. Bolt lock, so you know it won't come up. Alright, it's getting late, so I'm just gonna rig this up. I'm just gonna leave it on the floorboard, but I wanna at least get my dash back together. So I'm trying to run the wires under here and then in through there. So there, up into there. Alright, I wouldn't call it easy, but I got it through there. Now to get it up through here, which is gonna suck. Yeah, in the future, you probably want to run your speed wire first and then do all your splicing in the vehicle. It'll be a lot easier. Alright, there's actually a lot of room to run the wires right through there. So the goal with all this is to hook all this up, put it back together. And then do my amp setups. Uh, this isn't relevant to most people, but since I have that kicker amp, I wired in some quick disconnects here, ran the wire through here, and I want to stick it back up in here and connect it here, and then quick disconnect it down there because whenever I EQ this key amplifier, I can't have the sub connected. So, this is how I have this rigged up. Alright, so again, this is only if you have a sub that's powered by a DC offset. You need some kind of quick disconnect here. There's your main cables. Got my RCA's plugged in. And now I'm going to plug my harness and try to mount all this guy back in here. Alright, amazingly, I got all that plugged back in there. I got my USBs and everything hanging out here. So now, let's give her a shot. Alright, getting power, that's good. Put you over here. Close this other door. Alright, got my doors closed. Got my train wreck of wires over here. Put the amp on the floor for the time being. Alright, let's see if she works. So let's make sure my backup camera still works. It does. You know, don't listen to it. Let's make sure radio still works. There it works. Let's go play music. Now let's see if every speaker is working. Front and rear reversed. I'm gonna try to just flip these and see if that fixes it. Alright. Alright, so now I've got these working right. Yeah, I thought I was sad of weird, I forgot. I have those Quadratech super tweeters in here that I need to remove because. 
now it's split my power out between these and these. So I need to take those out now. If you never saw the super tweeters, they're pretty cool. Take them out now. Here's a super sweet super tweeter. It just plugs in. It comes all this rebuilt like this with a base blocker. And then you just pop this little guy out. That was the factory guy. This is the factory guy here. And this is all super tweeter here. Trying to figure out how to set this stuff. So I don't turn on one twelve volts. We got that. That part's working. Yeah, let's see what the rest of the stuff does. I don't really know if radio detect is on or off. It's a little button you depress. Yeah, no, I think you want that off. Yeah, that sounds a lot different with that Alright, so. Next one we want to deal with is so auto turn on. Now I want to turn time delay off, so time delay should be it. That should be my last white knob. That's one here. Kicker EQ, I have enabled buy amp mode. Buy amp mode, I want off. All right, so you're currently on. It should be one, two, three, four over, right? Let's right, see if it's any different now. She grabbed the wood like ripping. Like Alright, so 25. So let's set it here. If it goes up to 30, set 25. Compression, I don't want. Compression is the third one over. I'm going to turn that off. Alright. So right now the high pass filter is off. So So I just Googled how to set up a high pass filter. A ton of information, but this one said for rear coaxial speakers, high pass filter, 80 hertz, which is an option here. So I'm gonna put both those far right switches down to be at 80. Let's see right there. All right. Uh, other than setting those little gains. I don't know how to 
percent. All right, so this says do the game after the kicker auto EQ. Right, so now I gotta clean this mess up because all this stuff will make noise. Let me run my auto EQ. This is a big mess. Alright, it's next day. May 8th. Uh, other than this mess, I put everything pretty much back together. Got these parts snapped back on. Now I'm gonna run this auto EQ. So, do that. Get this little rubber strap guy. And then you plug this guy into the amp. strap and this is the button to turn it on. Here's how the rubber strap lays out. You can essentially just put this in here. There you go like that. And then you just lay this guy on your headrest. There's a little slit in here to run the mic wire. It's also this little hole, I don't know if that's for, but here's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so essentially, to me, that looks like it's supposed to be. So this microphone should be pointing up. And it has like a little dot there, which I assume was that metal gun. So. this for a little bit. Alright, so it says to download kicker.com slash tech to get the pink noise. So, kicker.com slash tech. Let's see what it takes us to. Software is probably what we're looking for. Their test tones. 20 minute lab grade pink noise. Alright, so I definitely have the key amplifier. So I don't know why I choose MP3 or Wave, but. Go with MP3. Okay, so we're still downloading that. It says make sure active noise cancellation and active noise enhanced are disabled. I don't think that's even an option, so I don't know what that even means. Maybe it's referring to your head unit or something. But I don't have those features. Alright. Set the key amplifier gains amp one and two to the minimum fully clockwise. So you can see the little arrow there. Maybe hard to see here. So you can 
kind of say I'm loading up. It's pointing towards zero. So got that one. Close all car windows. Got that. Uh, the buy amp switch should be off. Make sure the microphone faces up. Point as straight as possible to the roof. Start the pink noise. So this says turn off the engine, turn off the HVAC. And install the microphone to the top of the driver's side headrest. Start the pink noise. Slightly loud is not really a good description of what volume is set for. So quickly press the key activation button. You will hear repeating tones which indicate you exit the vehicle and close the door. You have 10 seconds till it begins. Alright, so you can erase it after 10 seconds. Alright, so right now I have auto turn on set to 12 volts I have fader on I have compression off I have by amp mode off I have kicker EQ on the time delay off but well, maybe I want time delay it's supposed to sound better for the driver and I'm the only one ever in here someone else is in here they're my passenger, so who cares what they want to hear? Maybe I uh, didn't bring my tool to change this. <coughs> Alright, so now I got time delay. On. And my high pre uh high pass filter is up to 80 hertz so let me set this down here let me go back to chrome here and open this I'll set it to 25 out of 25 out of 30. That's what this guy goes to. And I'm going to turn the... Right. I'll turn the Jeep off. Let me turn it back on. Twenty-five. Okay, he's still in there. I got this guy. Microphone pointing pretty high, close to up. Now I'm gonna press this little button, and I should hear some tones. All right, that's my warning. Outside the Jeep, you can kind of hear it. Supposed to take five minutes. So I'm gonna set my timer. Alright, I can't really hear anything out here, so I'm gonna stop the video. I doubt you can hear it. It's a weird sound it makes. It sounds like a truck backing up and then like a I don't know, like a sad song in a movie or something. Not a sad song. Some little woo 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 to <laughs> There you go. We got 10 seconds left on my 5 minute timer. It's still beeping and my timer's gone off. Give it 10 more seconds, see if it changes. If not, then I'll go in there and stop it and see if I can figure out what's going on. Uh, so 
Time's up. It's been 16 minutes here. It's 91 degrees outside. And let's see if I can figure out what went wrong here. I don't know if I had too much ambient noise. I had six beeps. Alright, I'm going to give it another shot. This time my volume is going to be on 15. So I kept failing. So I moved the Jeep and cranked up the heat noise to super high. Almost 30. And now it's making totally different noises. I wouldn't call it happy noises though. It's not my round new five minute clock. It's almost like a whistling sound. Alright, so now I'm getting four beeps, but it's not loaded. This, this thing's not even playing. Don't know why. So it was working and it's kind of quick. There it's working. Let's try it one more time. I had my. Uh, last night I set my high pass filter to 80. I turned that off. We're going to try it again. I thought maybe that's blocking out those tones and that's why I can't complete. So, we're going to start this again. Crank it up to 27. Play. I'm going to leave the Jeep running. Situated. All right, so that's the happy noise. I figured out what I was doing wrong. I had my amp set to buy amp mode. by accident because the switches were wrong here so I changed it to I'll show you on the actual e. I wonder if I should try that again with the 80 Hertz filter on well I'm gonna turn this unplug this for now I'm gonna play a song see if it sounds any different Okay, so I'll turn my 80 high pass filter back on. Uh, and I turned back on time delay. Now I'm going to try to erase this. Should hold it for 10 seconds. Doesn't make any sense. Alright, so that's the sound, so it means I erased it. So now I'm going to start it over again. Still with the Jeep running. And we'll see how this goes. So I'm playing my sound. Hit my button. 621. I can hear it beeping. Alright. Okay, 
another happy town soon, I think. Right, there we go. That's our happy town. So this one should be time delayed. I'm gonna press the button. Turn my air back on because it's roasting in here. Unplug this guy. Now I'll go back to my music and see if I notice any difference in sound. You see him running from the fifth. Dirty. Yelling out the window. Can't catch me. Catch me. He got away for now. For now. Talk upon a joke chain. We travel the coat. And of course I came to the show. Strap shards and toy cards. The rear speaker sound a little muffled. Maybe that's the time to lay fortune. Oh. Should be on flat. Alright, so now let's try setting the game. So, game matching, direct clipping for a quick setup. Turn the source unit to 3 4, so 25. Test tones. So, that should be before other games do that. So, Go back to that kicker website and see if it has test tones. So I couldn't figure out the test tones, but it does have these little lights here. So basically, I just messed with it until the light turned orange. Alright, so let's try this again. Hit the block with my side bitch and my mission is money I'm a hustle through the night still work the chef when it's sunny This whole hood is my area Make us sell our barrier Face to face with my four five bitch I'm a pistol terrier Fuck the cops they want my dope I didn't have it up. I had the volume up 25. Right, volume at 25. So again, I don't even know what I'm doing. The light comes on towards the end of the word amp. So I'll figure if I back it down to the A on both sides. This should be pretty good to listen to whatever I want. So both of them should be pointing right about the A. Because they're all four the same speaker. So it I would assume both of them should be the same. It does sound massively different than when the game was not turned on, so that makes sense. About after I bust them. Like, what you think I should do? I was pent on talking with my ex, she said, you know how I remember you. Lost inside the sex, thing, I forgot who I was fanning to. My homie favorite rapper, Kanye West, since we was little. So I knew that boy a motherfucking dropout for you when the school. My team too clean, turned this to a routine. Yeah, I turned... One is usually what I was listening to, so that sounds about right. Now I'm going to try to reconnect my sub and see how that sounds. Okay, I was a little skeptical last night, but... Sounds pretty fantastic now. So I set that EQ up and then I reconnected those wires to make my sub work. And now I got really clean bass and the audio sounds really good too. So uh, I'm pretty impressed. Obviously, I cleaned this mess up still. I'm going to let it there for a couple days while I make sure I have the sound like where I want it and then I'm going to 
uh, mount it properly. But so far, this little guy's a winner. Uh, I made a roundabout, complicated way of installing it, but it works. I'll listen to the sound a couple days and see what I think. Now I'm trying it with. You probably can't tell. I have the e. So I'm just using it as an amp. I turned the auto EQ portion off. I wiped it and reset it there. Clean, and then I adjusted the. So I'm just using this as a 180 watt amp. And uh, so that way I can still use the EQ on my head unit. And I can adjust it for different songs. I gotta say, it sounds pretty good. I don't even have my sub hooked up or anything, it's just that. And, uh. So the auto EQ does work. Um. Uh, again, I'm not an EQ kind of guy. I like these preset dumb dumb EQs that just kind of tell you where to do it. Right? Like one just, this one just says rock, and this one says pop and jazz. Uh, for me, that works pretty good. So, if I just use this as an amplifier. I was thinking about mounting this under the seat, but I watched a video on YouTube. And they had a, not the same kicker amp, but the same small ones, little, not the Alpine one either. Another like a JL Audio one that he had tucked under here in the glove box. I might get that shot, because it'll be right by the air conditioner for one, so it should be cool. Nothing's gonna get spilled on it there. And I don't really want to take the seat out. I will for something, but. Uh, so I'm gonna give that a shot. There seems like enough room to fit down there. And I should put some double sided Velcro tape on here and stick it on there, and it should work just fine. It shouldn't move or anything. Uh, well, I'll give that a shot. But I'm going to try it out for a little bit longer on just as an amplifier without the auto EQ. Uh, yeah, that's all I got.